straight out to Brett Larson, investigative reporter. How can she drive for miles and miles through the L.A. suburbs and not notice there's a man dying, and he did die, on her windshield? Yeah, not only on her windshield, punctured through the windshield, Nancy, for over two miles. This is literally a scene out of a horror movie. Good something grief. To do with Look at this. Mm -hmm. It may have something to do with the fact that she was twice the legal drinking limit when they finally tested her blood alcohol level because she, they also found vodka, beer, and a Clamato in her car because she was rushing home before the alcohol kicked in. Take a look at this. Matt Zarell, how did the whole thing occur? Well, the whole thing happened when Wilkins actually was leaving the substance abuse treatment center where she works. She then proceeded to drive two and a half miles with the victim on the car. And when the motorist stopped her, Nancy, she claimed she was taking the victim to the hospital and that he jumped in front of her car. With me right now, special guest out of L.A., Kevin Dinesh, the attorney for the victim's family, Philip Moreno. Kevin, thanks for being with us. This is a picture of her and her regular life, Sherry Lynn Wilkins. A far cry from the woman behind the wheel that night, yet she is one in the same. Mr. Dinesh, what is your reaction to her story about what happened that evening? Well, my reaction is the same as the family. Everyone was enraged. It's obvious what happened. It's obvious that she made poor decisions to drive while under the influence of alcohol and other substances, got behind the wheel, and in a reckless disregard for human life, uh, attempted to swerve erratically for miles on end to dislodge him from the vehicle. And everyone well, was enraged. Well, how did she end up hitting him to start with? Where was he and where was she? Well, he was walking lawfully across an intersection, uh, and she was driving down the street at a high rate of speed, so much so causing uh, his arm to punch through the windshield, as everyone stated previously, and dislodges clothing from him at certain points. And, uh, you know, she obviously was not driving in the Right. When you said capacity. dislodge his clothing, with me is the lawyer for the victim's family, Kevin Dinesh. Actually, was it her driving along and the force of the blow when she ran over him, tore off his shoes and his pants? Yes. As she was going uh, that whole path of destruction for two miles, uh, witnesses observed her violently uh, swerve back and forth, and that literally knocked his pants off and shoes off uh, to the point he was naked when she finally was tracked down by some good Samaritans and forced to stop the vehicle. So, Brad Lamb, if she was just leaving work as a substance abuse counselor and her alcohol limit was twice the legal limit, that means she had to be drinking at work. You know, Nancy, I got to tell you, this story is just so disturbing to me, and it makes me think of 11 years ago when I was in rehab, one of the guys that helped me so much get better later died in a, it wasn't this awful a story, but, you know, he used again and he got sick and he died. And I, it's just such an awful story, Nancy. But I, I guarantee if I go out and drink tonight, there will be horrible repercussions from it. I just, my heart goes out to the, all the families affected by this tonight, Nancy.